why is it important for you to be at this conference? This is very important for me because the concept of togetherness is an important value that the Danish education system is setting at the heart of education systems. OECD is currently discussing with many countries in the world, including Denmark, how we could uh, organize the learning framework, including the important values in the uh, picture of education policies. So this is important to share what OECD is doing with the participants, but also for me to learn from the discussions that the conference will uh, initiate. Okay. So until now, what have you learned about togetherness? What do you think is in the fluffy word? <laughs> I learned that it is really a timely issue, although it is a tradition in Denmark that you have been having togetherness uh, as part of education for a long time, but today in the current world where we face different challenges, togetherness is actually the very relevant concept that we have to think of and I would like to really uh, learn further how togetherness is uh, influencing the teaching and learning in Denmark. Okay. You mentioned that uh, the 6th of uh, December you will launch a new piece of program. Could you say a little bit more of uh, what what new perspective you're working with? Uh, this time, PISA will show the new uh, results of the students' learning outcome, focusing on science, because every three years we will uh, focus on one domain, and we will talk about science, science learning, but also motivation and engagement of students in scientific learning. Uh, in your paper, you said we are moving towards a more holistic view on the expected outcome of education. What do you mean by that? It means that traditionally education has been seen as a transmission of knowledge. And now it is more and more important to have broader perspectives of education as part of the learning objectives, including uh, social-emotional learning. You know, the PISA program has uh, a certain rumor all over the, the world. Do you think the politicians have, have adopted the PISA program in the right way? The politicians all over, I mean, for example, in Denmark or other countries, they are making P the PISA program uh, into a very competitive program. You know, who is number one, who is number two? That's what we focus on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, well, it depends on how we use the PISA data. PISA data is supposed to provide the rich information to better understand the strengths and challenges of countries. Then uh, it is important for everybody, not only for politicians, but also those who can make a change in education systems to really uh, get into deep uh, into PISA data and have the maximum of understanding of what are the challenges and what you can do. So I think it's important to drive the discussion towards what we should do to improve the situation and to offer every children the opportunity to learn and reach their full potential. Mm. What kind of change in PISA will we encounter in the future, do you think? In the future, PISA will uh, encounter an expansion, which means that uh, it started with uh, around 20 countries in the beginning 20 years ago. Now there are more than 70 countries participating in. But we are trying to make our efforts to uh, accommodate countries who are not participating for the moment in PISA, like more middle and low income countries. And we are uh, actually doing an effort efforts to improve the instruments of PISA so that it could be relevant for a wider range of countries, for example.